Wapa lapa tap ta. Welcome to this uh, philosophy video about Rick and Morty and philosophy. On the surface, it's a very uh, grotesque, uh, grotesque uh, violence and uh, a kind of uh, an adolescent uh, humor to it with its uh, emphasis on sex and uh, violence. But when you go deep into it, it's kind of, it makes you think. And there's a lot of uh, very intelligent plots. There's already something to think about here in the name, isn't there? Rick and Morty? Rick and Mortis? Rick and Mortis? Rick and Mortis! That's uh, a term for being stone dead. The show is about Rick and Morty, and Rick, he's the grandpa, he's kind of like a super scientist who invented a portal gun to travel through uh, a multi-universe, multi-universes. And he takes his uh, grandson Morty on, uh, on these uh, adventures. The character Rick Sanchez, he's kind of like the hero, the protagonist of this uh, sh show. He is a nihilist. And what is a nihilist? And a nihilist is somebody who lives without uh, any particular universal values to live in accordance with. He lives without any... He, he actually makes up his own values. He decides whatever he wants to, to, to do and what is right and wrong for him. So he's also a Rick Sanchez. He's also a kind of like a Friedrich Nietzsche, the philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche's uh, Übermensch, a Superman, because he lives beyond good and evil. He doesn't have this uh, value system of uh, of a universal good and evil and and divides. He does whatever he wants to do. He's very egotistical in that way, that he lives. He he just does what he he. He, he wants to do. And that is the Nietzschean Superman. He just goes around making his own values and uh, creating his own ideals, what, what he wants to do. And he just lives without any uh, slave morality with the considerations to, uh, to other people, especially with his uh, grand, uh, grandchild Morty. And Morty, he is, he has this uh, basic from the start, he has this basic uh, uh, moral rules that he's uh, brought up with uh, in in his culture, that is our society. But he's constantly challenged by uh, 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 Rick's uh, nihilism, and and it kind of also pervades during the show over to Morty. That's also the interesting part about Rick and Morty that it's not a typical. Uh, where the characters don't really develop; they always stay the same when you go back to it. Like in uh, Simpsons and uh, and uh, 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 Family Guy, you can tune in at any time. Ah, there they are, Peter Griffin. He's still the same Peter Griffin, right? And Homer Simpson, he's still the same Homer Simpson. But in this show, they can progress. Morty, he becomes more nihilistic uh, through the, the the show. At one point, uh, Morty he says says to his uh, sister Summer. Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. Come watch TV. It goes deep, this uh, nihilism and this uh, existentialism that pervades the show, where it's philosophical idea that the whole world and everything in the universe is pointless and meaningless, and you are nothing special. Because that's you're living in a multi-universe. There's millions of different versions of you. Take one out. What does it really matter? There's always another one. Like Rick Sanchez, he says, why should I love my grandchildren? I can just take a, another Morty. And and the show also makes fun of this in, in a, an intro. It's never shown in a, in a, in a, a specific uh, episode, but, but there's an intro where he uh, he, he kind of in a store chooses between the two Mortys and so that's also a funny thing go, going on here with this that that you are nothing special you can you can be replaced especially if you can travel through the multi-universe 
as Rick Sanchez does. There's also an interesting uh, element to Rick Sanchez's character is that he uh, is all, all <coughs> behaves drunk and and why does he drink? It's never really uh, explained in any episode why he drinks. He just often appears drunk and he says he's gonna drink. Uh, he's gonna drink himself shit faced. Is it so? You can you can ask the question uh, that why does he drink? Why does Rick Sanchez drink? Is it because he wants to cope with this uh, nihilism that he that the universe is pointless? He's kind of pointless, everybody's pointless, everything is meaningless, is it a way to cope with this? Or maybe he doesn't just, maybe he don't give a shit and that's why he drinks, but take a philosopher like Albert Camus, who's also a, a famous existentialist. He uh, he wrote that, uh, that uh, life is very, very, very meaningless and it's kind of like we're all like this uh, Greek Latin legend of Sisyphus. Sisyphus who uh, who rolls this uh, giant uh, rock up on uh, on a mountain and when he comes to the top the rock rolls down and he has to go down and, and roll up again and it's no pointless just do the same thing all over, over again and Camus says you can uh, Sisyphus can, can there's three ways to uh, kind of uh, uh, deal with that situation of the pointlessness of existence and that is through uh, you could commit suicide that's one option or you could uh, deny it you can deny that it's uh, it's uh, pointless and kind of uh, find meaning in in your doings uh, like uh, find me meanings in uh, Rick and Morty or in a in another TV show or in in a loving relationship in your your job in your in your philosophy and and so forth you can find lots of meaning there but that's denial in uh, according to Camus but there's also a third option that is to accept that life is meaningless and embrace it and and try to say I don't care if it's meaningless. I'm gonna do life anyway. I'm gonna be an Übermensch kinda in the world, knowing that it doesn't make any sense. I do what I wanna, what I do. I drink if I wanna drink. I just do what I what I what I wanna do. So that's also the interesting part here in uh, Rick and Morty that the character of Rick Sanchez he actually live in accordance to uh, Camus' uh, acceptance. He just accepts that the world is utterly pointless and meaningless and live it out. There's also something very very interesting going on with the plot of uh, Rick and Morty and that is every time you kinda get to a point where you think that Rick he would kinda show his love and become a sort of uh, normal hero that we know in uh, these uh, shows and series and and he would show his love and, 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 and develop some kind of a meaningful uh, end, a kind of a catharsis to the plot. He gets away. He, he, he explains it away or he makes fun of it or he, he jokes. So you never really get this uh, catharsis uh, like you and like we want and that's the interesting part here that tells something about the viewer that we kind of uh, long for this uh, sense of meaning in the series in a television show that ah he learned something he he end up loving his uh, grandson and, and at the end of the episode uh, ring shank uh, redemption uh, which is the first episode of uh, of season three? You think now he saved his entire family from uh, from uh, imprisonment, uh, and he do does that because he he loved them. No, no, he reveals right at the end where you think, ah, he he was the loving grandfather after all, who done the right thing and saved his entire family. He explains to Morty. No, it was a plot device to keep them 
on these adventures, his nihilistic uh, quest of doing whatever he wants, and to get a Susquatchian sauce, uh, Susquatchian, I don't, I don't know if I pronounce it right, but this uh, McNugget sauce that they had at McDonald's in 1998 when Mulan was out, Susquatchian sauce, so that's what he really is after. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. It makes sense to to uh, to uh, save your family, or does it? The, that's the very funny and uh, genius uh, plot device here that we never get this uh, catharsis. Up. I began with this video with uh, "Wabba laba da da," which is a famous catchphrase from uh, Rick Sanchez. And the interesting thing here, he's, he says it live, and he says it very. Uh, uh, with humor and, and kind of like his uh, high, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to me, it makes him uh, feel cheerful that wabba laba da da but Morty during the show he learns from uh, Rick's, uh, one of Rick's uh, friends, a uh, bird person that a bird person says to Morty wabba daba <laughs> wabba laba da da that means help me I'm in great pain, or uh, gr I'm in great pain, help me. So, that's very interesting. Why would you keep going around saying that, and you kind of have to really understand what it means. So, that's also very interesting that, that again, with his uh, drinking, is he really that übermensch? after all Rick Sanchez, or is it kind of that he wants to live in this uh, acceptance, but he's kind of also in a bit denial, or he has to numb himself with alcohol, or or, or, or something like that, so it's a very interesting uh, plot point. I really like this episode. I even got uh, the T-shirt uh, right here from from the show. But it plays with this uh, stolen identity because uh, they come across these uh, brain parasites that uh, that kind of uh, at the house. There, there are suddenly more people and characters in the house, and they are because of this brain parasite unsure who was really originally there was it was 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 Rick even there and what about Morty was there only Rick even Rick is uh, is kind of questioning who was really there at the beginning was it Rick and Morty and then there was uh, Morty's uh, mother uh, Beth and uh, Morty's sister uh, Summer and uh, and uh, Morty's father Jerry but there's also a lot of characters in in there you see here from the the t-shirt there's a, a lot of uh, uh, characters uh, on the t-shirts and I think they're all here from the Rick and Morty show and they kind of question it who who was there originally to do because they all have memories of these uh, characters but Morty he comes interestingly up with uh, an idea that the ones they only have good memories with they are the fake ones because Morty comes to to uh, recollect that he has a lot of uh, bad memories with uh, Rick Grandpa Rick but he doesn't have any bad uh, memories with some of uh, a lot of the other characters in that episode so they start killing all those characters in order to uh, to 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 release themselves for these parasites, they they kill everybody they don't have a a bad memory with, and the interesting at at the end, uh, Beth 
uh, Rick Sanchez's daughter and Morty's uh, mother, she assumes uh, Poopy, Mr. Poopy Butthole. And it turns out Poopy Pothole was something they, they knew all along. He's not a, a, a fake memory. But for us, he seemed like a fake memory because the intro to that particular episode, Mr. Poopy Pothole was there at uh, every uh, sequence at the intro. And the first time you used it, you were like, is, was he, he didn't used to be there. What is this character? You kind of... Uh, in doubt who this uh, Mr. Poopy Butthole is cause, and you kind of try to think what was he in there in the other intros, I, I don't remember and it turns out at the end of this episode he was something that, that they, they, they uh, had a memory with, he was real but for us he was fake because we haven't seen him in other episodes of course from from then on he he keeps popping up at, at other episodes but not this first episode was in rick uh, total recall so that's very interesting and that that's very philosophical who are you who are me am i really maybe i'm dreamt up by some somebody it goes way back in philosophical history actually one of the oldest thing ever written is the dream dreams the dreamer supposed to uh, it's an old uh, from from india uh very old text that says the dream dreams the dreamer that's very interesting so what is real is it all a dream is your life an entire dream when you wake up would that be the real world do you sometimes wake up and are confused about where you were and 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 you kind of woke up from a dream that seemed very real and is this really place on that and place on the the philosopher Descartes who's also kind of in doubts if he's alive or he's just a, a kind of inventions and he's kind of fooled by a uh, a uh, um, a uh, an, an evil demon of some sort. So so it goes way back in philosophy just to to be unsure who you are. But also if everybody else is fake, that's called solipsism. Uh, to be alone, uh, where you 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 think, am I just alone? Are everybody else around me fake? Are there just something in my mind? one of the entities, the beings, inside the simulated battery, he has uh, made his own battery to kind of uh, uh, save his simulated world. He's going to use that battery to, well, he has used this battery to, uh, to, uh, to replace all these uh, boards that do by making a, a battery and that battery he has made is simulated world where beings in you get the idea and that's the very interesting here that's also very philosophical and and that's the whole idea are we living in a simulated world and if we're living in a simulated world then what then this whole place is not real but the, also the interesting thing when you think about are we living in a simulated world it is if I can think of a plausible thing like I'm living in a simulated world and I can start to think ah, it's built on a computer it's I'm a, a computer cram I can think this stuff up and it's not not that far off in the future where we can simulate a world and we kind of have simulated worlds in a computer if I can think about that as a possibility that 
that I can simulate it thing. That means it's possible that I am in a simulated world, and it's possible within that simulated world that somebody would simulate something. So it's possible from that hypothesis that that I we may be living in a simulated world that has been simulated. We're living in a simulated world within a simulated world within a simulated world within a simulated world. And that's what it plays off in this uh, uh, The Rigs Must Be Crazy with <laughs> Rick Sanchez's battery that he's created to, to power his uh, spaceship. And of course when the characters find out that they're just simulated that their whole existence was uh, kind of fake it also plays into this uh, Plato's cave, where where down in the cave they have, you have these prisoners that, that they come up to the real world and, and find out that all the things they saw down in, sh in the cave was fake. It was just shadows on the walls. Now they come up and see the, the true sun, the real trees and so forth. So it's also plays on this. So there's a lot of uh, great uh, philosophical paradoxes or are uh, interesting points in this uh, The Rigs Must Be Crazy. see this episode it's so far out what he can do from a pickle and and become so self uh, sufficient and and comes back to being Rick Sanchez the human being at the end but there's also something about this episode that he has turned himself into a pickle because he can no you find out during this episode he probably also does this because he would avoid going into uh, to uh, counseling, psychological counseling with his uh, family, with his uh, daughter Beth and uh, and Morty and, and Summer, uh, uh, Beth's children, his uh, grandchildren. Uh, to avoid that, because he's kind of, oh, I forgot, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Morty, was that today? Uh, he, 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 he plays on that, but of course he has done it to avoid this. But why avoid it? But that's probably goes back to this nihilism again, because he thinks it's about finding meaning. It's about this catharsis again to go into family counseling with a psychologist. It's pointless because he is this uh, ubermensch. So it, it, it plays on these uh, two sides uh, and plays on this uh, what happens when you're so smart that you kind of are separated from the rest of us. It's science, that is what he adheres to. He is a scientist, most of all, he runs around in a lab coat in each episode, so he, you could say he adheres to this uh, a, a particular form of uh, adherence to science, scientism. It, it, it's kind of the belief in the power of uh, science to solve all problems. And he used strict uh, science to survive as a pickle. He's very self-sufficient in this way. Uh, so, besides from being an ubermensch, he's also a, a super scientist. In an in another episode, Rick portion, uh, hashtag 9, uh, Rick Sanchez says to Morty, What people call love is a chemical reaction that compels animals to breed. It hits hard, Morty, then it slowly fa fades. Break the cycle, Morty. Rise above. Focus on science. Activism comes from the philosopher Ayn Rand. And Ayn Rand, she, uh, she had the ph philosophy uh, which has been labeled ob ob objectivism. 
circumstances he relies only on himself and his own rationality. An objectivist in an Rand sense is a, a person who uses entirely reason, their own reason, and tries to strengthen their own reason to uh, to to reach some goals. And that's the important thing for life in life and for an objectivist that is to reach some goals, some objectives. When and you rely on your self sufficiency, your self reason. And it's not that you don't care about others, uh, actually you would like to help others become good objectivists themselves, but, but you rely on yourself. And it also comes uh, across in uh, Rick Sanchez's self-love, that also comes across in this uh, pickle Rick, and, and, and why he's not uh, want to be in this uh, family counseling session, because he's pretty much self-sufficient. He doesn't re nearly need family or a psychologist to help him because he's a scientist. He, ad he adheres to scientism and he adheres to this objectivism, you could say. And also thing with uh, Rex Chances, you can call him maybe an, an, an anarchist of some sort because uh, he's against, against any form of government. And all the other Rick Sanchez in the multi-universes, a lot of them, few thousand of them, they got together to create this uh, Citadel movement, which is a form of government. And Rick, our Rick, the Rickest of them all, Rick himself, he uh, is against this Citadel and this uh, government because, well, he's an anarchist, really. And he says those of them who... You become the government yourself. You were trying to avoid government, but you became the government yourself. That's what he says to these uh, uh, other rigs in the Citadel. So we come to the end of this video, and I will try to uh, maybe conclude something, but you cannot really conclude something. And you especially cannot conclude something about Rick and Morty, because it eludes this uh, catharsis uh, conclusion. Uh, Anything may happen in Rick and Morty, and anything will happen in Rick and Mor Morty. You cannot conclude any specific thing. There's a lot of interesting movement going on there all the time. So it's kind of like life. Remember what Morty says. Take this with you. When Morty he says, nobody's born on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Come watch TV.